Yeah. This will be your working examples for climate cycle. So the example here, a uh, hot reservoir at 800 degrees C and a cold reservoir at 15 degrees C. So the 800 degrees C will be the high temperature. So you have to add it with 273, 800 plus 273 convert to Kelvin. And the 15 degrees C also you must add it with 273 to convert that to Kelvin. Then the question asks us to calculate the thermal efficiency and the work ratio of a Carnot cycle using A. So A will be the system here. A would be the system, okay, as the working fluid, if the maximum and minimum pressures, they have given us both the pressure, 210 bar and 1 bar. Okay, so for A, we have to take the R here is actually the specific gas constant. Okay, the specific gas constant, and for A is standard. For A, because we are looking at A as the working system, the working fluid. So the specific gas constant is 0 0.2871. And the gamma, that is the adiabatic index for A, is standard 1.4. So you have to add 800 with 273, so you have 1073 Kelvin. And the low temperature is 288 Kelvin. So here you have your TS diagram. So first thing you have to draw your TS diagram. So the TS diagram, you have to put in both your temperature line, which represents both the isothermal process. So based on the high temperature 1073 and the low temperature of 288. And then you have two isentropic process. So you draw both the isothermal line and then you have both your isentropic line, okay? Then you put in the points. Now, so each intersection here, you have points. So remember, most of the heat engines, they move in clockwise direction, clockwise direction. So you can put in your point one, two, three, and four in clockwise direction. So the one point one that is shown here, it is not necessary to be located there. You can just place your point one on the left hand most top corner okay now what is denoted is point two so you can also put point one there and then continuously the next one will be two three and four okay so i put point one for this and two three and four in the clockwise direction so you can put in the arrows in clockwise direction as well so the process is actually or the cycle is in clockwise direction so this is your Carnot cycle on the TS diagram. The Carnot cycle on TS diagram. So the arrow should be moving in a clockwise direction. And the next diagram should be your PV diagram. So PV diagram, you must be able to draw two of the isothermal lines, the pressure sorry, the pressure volume diagram, the earlier one was TS diagram. So on your pressure volume diagram, both your temperature line, okay, that is based on your TH and TL. The higher one should be TH, the lower one should be TL. Then you have the two red lines here represents both the isentropic process or the constant entropy. Then you put your points in clockwise direction. Okay, the points should be in clockwise direction also. Okay, so point one, two, three to four in clockwise direction. So your point one must reflect to the point one that you have on your TS diagram. Okay, so you cannot simply put your point one anywhere else on your PV diagram now because the point one should be reflecting the point one on the TS diagram. So that is your maximum pressure and minimum pressure that is given in the question. Then you have your volume, the outermost, the innermost is V2 and the outermost is V4. Okay? 
so the arrows, and it should be in clockwise direction as well. So you have both your TS and PV. Remember the purpose of TA, having TS diagram is to find the area of the TS diagram which is under the process path of 2 to 3 and 4 to 1. So that is why we have to draw TS diagram so that we can find out the heat based on supply, based on the heat supply and the heat rejector. Okay, so that is why we have the TS diagram. Why do we have the PV diagram? It's just because if let's say, for example, if we want to find the uh, work ratio, we can use the PV diagram to show us, okay, the 2 to 3 and 3 to 4 is actually referring to the both the expansion process. Okay, so here I have uh, used a tabular method where I need to, where I will be putting in all the values that is given in the question. So based on pressure, volume, and temperature, and the vertical column should be referring to the uh, state point one, two, three, and four. State point one, two, three, and four, and the horizontal column should be referring to per, uh, the all the three uh, properties of thermodynamics: is pressure, volume, and temperature. So the question has given us both the pressure the maximum pressure and the minimum pressure. The maximum pressure is 210 and the minimum pressure is 1 bar. And we know that the question has also given us the highest temperature and the lowest temperature. So the highest temperature we have marked on our TS diagram, 1073. So point 0.2 and point 0.3 should be having temperature of 1073 Kelvin. And then the lower temperature, 288, which reflects the 0.1 and 0.4 on your TS diagram. So that is 288 and 288. So, based on the table that I have put up, okay, so what you have here is, you have to fill up the space of, uh, let's say, state point one you need or you require to find out the pressure and volume if it is required. So you have to find the P and the volume for state point one. And then when you refer to the second row of the table, 210 bar and 1073 Kelvin, they are given. So you can see there is an empty space that is supposed to be the volume. So you have to find out the volume for this also. So if you want to find out this volume, it's much easier because there is only one unknown. So you can straight away use your PV equals to RT, the ideal gas formula, or the PV equals to MRT, the ideal gas formula for one state point, that is state point two with only one unknown. And remember, they have given us the specific gas constant, 0.2871. So we can straight away use the PV equals to RT, or the PV equals to MRT. So since this question here, they have not given us any mass or to calculate any mass. So it is better for us to use straight away the ideal gas law of PV equals to RT, where V should be the specific volume. So what we are going to find here will be the specific volume. So state point one to two, that I consider this as the part A. So part A here, you can also use, you can also start with point one to two because we can see that point one to two actually is an isentropic process, right? It's an isentropic process. So for any isentropic process, as I mentioned earlier, you can use this relationship that it is written down, that I've written down here. This is the relationship between pressure and temperature. So you have the power of gamma over gamma minus one. So if you take temperature to pressure, it should be pressure to the power of gamma minus 1 over gamma. But since you are taking pressure to temperature, you have gamma over gamma minus 1. And in the question is given gamma as 1.4. So you have this. Then you substitute your pressure P2, which is 210, and your temperature at T1 is 288, temperature at point 2, which is 1073, and gamma, which is 1.4. So from here, you can find out your pressure, P1. 
So that is why I prefer you to work out as in a table form like that. So that you will be able to see what are the things you should find. That means doing things with a target, not aimlessly you do something. So you have an aim, what to find, uh, 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 what are the properties that is, that is required and you have to find. So the properties or the things that you have to find, you can just apply the isentropic uh, relationship between the properties or you can apply your ID guess law. So once you've got P1 equals to 210 multiplied by 0 0.268 to the power of 3.5, then you work out your P1 that is supposed to be 197.3. So the 197.3, just fill it up onto your uh, table. So you have 197.3 there now. So when you refer to that, now you have 0.1 also missing out of one property, 0.2 also missing out of one property, 0.3 missing out of three, and 0.4 missing out of one property. So it goes to the next, now that is straight point, state point three to four. What is state point three to four? You can see state point three to four, they are, they are referring here now. That means you will be basically applying the isentropic or the adiabatic uh, properties relationship again. So once you apply that, now you are actually referring to 3 to 4. So 3 to 4 is actually an isentropic process, correct? Referring to the TS diagram is much easier. Whenever you see a vertical line on a TS diagram, that means it's an isentropic process. So isentropic process, you have this, the relationship between pressure and temperature. So you are taking pressure to temperature. So the temperature start should be power of gamma over gamma minus one. But if you take temperature to pressure, then on the pressure side should be gamma minus one over gamma. And remember the formula. So from this, we know P4, we know T3, we know T4, we know gamma. So we can find out P3. So that is your P3 of 99.8 bar. Okay, so referring to the table that we have earlier, we have found 197.3 for state point 1. So now we put in our P3. Follow? Now, basically when you refer to the table, what is left is the volume. So to find out all the volumes is very easy. Just apply PV equals to RT to each point, you will be able to find out the volume V1, V2, V3, and V4. So state point one, to find a specific volume, that Y specific volume and not absolute volume. Remember, when the question has not given you any mass, and it doesn't require to find out mass, then it should be a specific volume. So applying ideal gas law, okay, PV equals to RT. Note that this is for point one. Point one, you have pressure. 197.3 and temperature 288. So this mass is not given in the question. Otherwise, you will have to use PV equals to MRT. If question is given as mass, you will have to use PV equals to MRT. The question has not given us the M for this, so we use PV equals to RT. So from here, R we know that is 0.2871 kilojoules per kgk. So you have to times with 10 to the power of 3 because it's kilojoules. Temperature Kelvin, that is, should be 1, uh, 288. P1 is 288 Kelvin. And pressure P1 is 197.3 bar. This is in bar, so you must multiply by 10 to the power of 5. You must multiply 10 to the power of 5. Remember that bar to Newton per meter square must be times 10 to the power of 5. Newton per meter square because one bar is 10 to the power of 5 Newton per meter square or one bar is 10 to the power of 5 Pascal. Okay, so you can find out your specific volume should be in meter cube per kg, that is specific volume. If absolute volume is in meter cube. <coughs> so that is your V1. Once you have found out the V1, fill it up into the table. So then you move on with your next point. Okay, your state point two. So the same thing, I do guess law applies everything. Then you get volume 
B20.0147 meter cube per kg built into the table. Then you move to state point 3. So you apply ideal gas law again, so you've got your B3. So fill it into the table again. Then you move on to the last state point 4. Ideal gas law again, and you found out that the volume is 0.827 built into the table. So you have filled up the whole table. So once the table is filled up, that means you've got all the properties that is required already to be applied into the formula in finding out the efficiency, the work ratio, or mean effective pressure later on. So you redraw your diagrams by putting in all your properties. Okay, so now network, as we know, it should be heat supply minus heat rejector. So how we got this formula, then you have to find the area under 2 to 3, the area, you have to take the area under 2 to 3 minus the area under 4 to 1. You will probably arrive to this formula, which is TH minus DL times S4 minus S1. TH is 1073, TL is 288. And S4 minus S1 should be the change of entropy. So based on the table that I have given, use the table and apply the formula based on isothermal process. Because 4 to 1 or 2 to 3, when it refers to TS diagram, is a straight horizontal line. That means it refers, actually is referring to the isothermal process. So for isothermal change of entropy, you have this formula. Apply everything, find out your change of entropy. Then substitute your THTL, substitute your S4 minus S1, you get your network out which is equal to 1190.85 kJ per kg. Then the next thing, heat supply. Easiest, because you have found the S4 minus S1 and you know pH. So substitute, you can find out your QS. Then substitute both of it into the thermal efficiency formula or the Carnot efficiency formula. You have your efficiency 73.2%. Then to find gross work expansion, remember gross work expansion, then you have to refer to both the expansion process. Now, as in TS diagram, it won't be able to show that clearly. So you have to refer to your PV diagram and look at your PV diagram, where are the expansion process? It should be located at your point two and three for this case, for my diagram, and three to four. So two to three is an isothermal process. So for isothermal process, remember change of internal energy is zero. So when you refer to your net flow energy equation, you got your Q equals to W. So you can apply straight away the formula, which is equal to the Q two to three. So you got your work two to three. So the next is three to four. We know that three to four is an isentropic process. For any isentropic process, Q is equal to zero. So when you refer to net flow energy equation again, when you ignore the Q, you have your W equals to the change of internal energy. So change of internal energy is equal to CVT. So that is why you have CVT3 minus T4. So substitute your T3 and T4, you get your work 3 to 4. So add up both, you got your gross work expansion. Add up 1627.7 with 563.3. You get your gross work. So you take network over gross work, you get your work ratio. Okay? So that's all for the first example. We will talk about the second example later. So that's all for now. So this is the second example. So you have to go through all yourself. Okay? Please.